uh, we'll post it on the website. Uh, one second till it starts here. Okay, the meeting is now being recorded. Cheryl? Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. We're in this unusual space today. It's very nice. Okay, first we'll uh, go for the approval of the minutes. I'm waiting for a motion to do so. Or I'll make correct. a motion for that. Okay, I'll thank you. Thank you. Is that Elaine? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. All in favor? Yes? Yes. Aye. 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 All righty. I presume we have no audience comments. Is right? Is that right? No, but could, um, maybe we can get Dr. J to introduce herself. Oh, okay. That would be lovely. Yes, Dr. J, could you introduce yourself and your role with the county now? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharon J, and yes, it is Dr. J. So if you want to say Dr. J, it's perfectly fine to say that. It's a lot of fun. Um, I just started a couple of weeks ago working with Francine Locke. Um, on the operations side, working on the sustainability plan. I'm gonna be helping oversee the sustainability commission and basically the development of the whole entire sustainability plan for the county. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, my last couple of jobs, last couple of years, I worked for the District of Columbia's Department of Energy and Environment, standing up a brand new program around building performance and energy. Um, I worked for New York City Schools for a little while as their director of sustainability, and I've done some nonprofit work and facility management work in um, educational facilities. So that's kind of my background. So I'm very happy to meet everybody virtually. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. It's nice to meet you and welcome. Already, do we have any correspondence or announcements? PACD monthly report, anything we should attend to on this? Uh, nothing of, of report. Yeah, I read it. I didn't see anything either, but you, know, you have a much keener eye for these things. Uh, already, I will uh, entertain a motion to file all bank statements for audit. I'd like to make a correction. Okay. Somehow the nine got left off of the total amount, so it's 948,700. Wow, what happened to it? <laughs> yeah, they're a little. Computer glitch there where the nine got cut off, but <laughs> that will be addressed. Okay, With that correction, I so move. All right, thank okay. you. All right. Thank you very much, Frank and Randy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have emergency reviews. Motion to approve for deposit the following emergency review fees. June 1st, Davis Avenue. And that looks like it's it, right? Yes, it is. All righty. I'll make that motion. Okay, thanks, Randy. Is there a second? Second. Okay, let's see. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next page. Motion request to approve $1,050 for a maximum of seven hours to our accountant to assist us in preparing for audit if needed. Yes, we do have an, our, our bookkeeper accountant that um, works for us and does our QuickBooks and analyzes it. I was talking to them because uh, we're going to get a new auditor this year. The controller's office is in charge, and we haven't had to have an outside uh, an auditor other than um, uh, Chris Reynolds for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I don't know what has changed. And I know that we've had a more strenuous review prior uh, with some of the other auditors, and I don't know what's been changed and updated. So I'd like to have the flexibility that if I need assistance in uh, preparing our account financial report uh, that uh, that I could use their services at $150 an hour um, like for a maximum of $1,050. Okay, sounds like a good idea. It's better to be prepared and, know, and you never know if people have different methods, so this would be good. Okay, so I'll entertain this motion to approve the $1,050. I'll so move. Okay, um, thank you. Second. Thank you, Randy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Already. And next, a motion a request to approve the purchase of four copies of Blue Beam software for use with e permitting system. $1,614.60 from the Clean Water Fund. Yeah, IT was helpful in uh, obtaining the uh, quote or the price for us. Um, they get it through um, CoStars, so it is already bid out and got the. the it's only available prices available in mm -hmm. closed doors. Um, what I would, I already reached out to Francine and got a hold of uh, 
someone else was working for Francine and um, they were going to try to find a way for us to purchase it, give the money to the county and uh, and put it into a capital account. And then we just like we've done with our vehicles and things. So in other words, we're going to buy it through the county. So the IT will be in charge of it and IT will install it for us and, and uh, make sure that everything's running according to uh, uh, their network requirements. And then we will reimburse the county for this expense if, if approved. OK, that sounds good. I'll make that motion. All right, thanks, Randy. Second. OK, I'll second it. OK. All in favor? Aye. 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 Alrighty. Now, it says checks to be signed. Southeastern Pennsylvania Resource Conservation and Development Council, $1,196.25. Yes, Karen Wilwall was successful in uh, applying for a Growing Greener grant uh, to um, fund some work with the conservation planting trailer. Yeah. And uh, the way we're trying to do it now, we have certain expenses that have been paid by the RCD, uh, and then other expenses that for the thing will come directly to us and we'll pay it. But the one expenses that are for insurance, we're going to break it out into what's available for the trailer and then reimburse the, the RCD to keep track of our $11,000 we have for the grant. So the, the first expenses that came up were for insurance and uh, registration and our um, we have a GPS unit in there so we can track where the trailer is at any <laughs> time. And uh, that those expenses came to out to $1,196.25. We'd like to give a check to the RCND to reimburse them for those costs. Okay, do we need a motion for this one? Yes, okay. please. Okay. Sure, I'll make a motion. And is that is that you, Frank, making a second? Uh, yeah. All righty. All righty. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay, so this is good. And I will send, send this check. Okay, now we're into old business. How about the MOU for the district and county council? So what's the latest? I have not uh, heard anything back from... Um, uh, Mr. Martin on that. I did send him a, a, an email reminder and a follow up email reminder. And unfortunately, he was I was talking to him about an issue with um, Rick Slosberg out at the county prison and, and they uh, didn't get to bring up that subject of the, uh, the um, of the uh, MOU. But mm -hmm. I, I'll, I will send him another uh, reminder and see if he has time to look at that. Uh -huh. So we're still kind of like hanging fire on that's that, why right? it's on there just yeah, just just keep a, a place place holder. right exactly all righty now the facebook page update so what's happening with i i do visit it yeah karen's doing an excellent job in in the maintaining posts that are of interest to the the public um we're not getting a lot of growth yet on um followers but uh we're above our go our quota that we set ourselves, which was mm -hmm. 200. So we're above that number in followers and likes is about, which is a little different is like 174, I think, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, are, we're routinely getting a lot of um, more than the other surrounding counties. Bucks County beats us every one. They do like 10 posts a day, I think. <laughs> they, they just keep sharing from all the different websites. But, right. And I don't want to overload anybody, so I'm not looking for, to do that. So I'm telling Karen that she does three to four a month, I think is what our goal is for now. And then right. we'll see how that works. But she's doing an excellent job and looking for interesting content. And um, and we're getting uh, different people uh, sharing that in information as well. But hopefully as we grow, we'll get better at it. Yeah, I think it's doing well for a uh, fledgling. Mm -hmm. it's working really well. So thank you, Karen. Uh, she's not here. Okay. No, she's on vacation oh, today. Okay, well, thank you for me. Well, okay. Next up, conservation district fee for service schedule. What's happening with that? Okay, I, I will put it on the agenda, but I'd like to postpone it because we're still working through some issues. We don't know what our all our um, expenses are going to be. They, there was been a, a, a some action on um, salary increases based on the compensation study, and uh, preliminary figures I have haven't been finalized yet mm -hmm. and i'd like to have those numbers in hand before i go ahead and determine how much additional cost that we're going to need to recoup mm -hmm. with our fee schedule and so, based on the program so hopefully well i'll be able to bring this up in september okay so we'll just postpone that until september all righty 
Next up, new business, phone cell, cell phone re reimbursement. So I, I reached out to telecommunications trying to find out what they what charges for a cell phone because they didn't the, the gamut of uh, reimbursement programs that other districts have are all over the board. Uh, we started with $15 a, a month for the uh, reimbursement and um, and that's been last 15 years. So I, I'm looking and wondering what would be a good uh, rate to increase it to. Uh, I think because of the pandemic and working remotely, um, some of uh, the phones got used a lot more than mm -hmm. in the past. Originally, we set it up just for an emergency service, and then uh, we would not refer any calls uh, to the people in the field unless they went through Gina. Gina would get the message and refer it. So nobody got the the, uh, the phone, but now everybody's gotten it because mm -hmm. you've made phone calls from it remotely. Right. Uh, so that's what I was wondering. I was thinking about $25, and, um, and I talked to the uh, Mr. McGee and uh, telecommunications, and he said that that was a very reasonable amount. But um, I just wanted to get the board's opinion and see how the board wanted to handle this. I just double it to 30. Yeah, it, you want to make sure it's adequate. Right. I mean, that seems to me. That would be fine. All right. So, do we are you going to make a motion to do that? Yes, I would think that would probably be. Excellent. All right, so I'll make a motion to increase the cell phone reimbursement from $15 a month to $30 a month. Okay, good. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thanks, Elaine. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now this is Michelle's time, right? The poster contest? Yes. Yep. Um, so I, I don't remember if I mentioned during the last meeting, but we only received a total of 12 posters this year. So um, very low amount, but we forwarded all the first place posters in four of the five categories that we had entries for to PACG um, at the end of June to be submitted for the state competition. Um, and that will probably be held in about the beginning of August. So, so we'll work on new things for next year or see how everything is if we'll allow for um, in I call it in person posters next year. <laughs> so we forward them forwarded them on. This is good. Well, maybe then we'll have some winners. That'll be yep. great. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. OK, thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. OK, the county MS4 permit activities. All righty. Yeah, so I just want there, there was one other item that. Um, <clears throat> I had in a report somewhere, but basically the state uh, with the pandemic wasn't issuing checks, so they sent it to our bank account. Well, we're set up on their SAP system, so they gave us the reimbursement for the $19,615 that we paid to Yaden for their 50% for their startup on their um, low volume road project, mm -hmm. and they deposited it in the wrong account. So I'd, I'd like to make sure that we put this uh, $19,615 transfer from our money market account to our low volume road program account. Okay. You get a motion for that. Alrighty. So, so I hear a motion to transfer this money from the money market to the low volume road. Low volume road program. Right. Right. Motion? Motion. Move. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I apologize for not having that on the agenda. That's all right. <clears throat> you were able to explain it. That was good. On the MS4 program, uh, I, we have to do an annual report or progress report every year. Um, currently, we finished up some outfall inspections and uh, we found a few minor things that we had to address. And th those uh, reports were sent to the various department heads, mainly. Um, the, the ones we found a couple minor things at Clayton Park that uh, to Mark Manfrey's so that you could look take a look at it. Um, we also did uh, work with planning. Karen's out over there working with planning. I really appreciate their help, but they one of the parcels that we added that hasn't been added to our permit yet was the Chester Creek Trail, which has uh, a, a rain garden over there that we have to monitor and some uh, outfall pipes as well. So they're mapping that outfall uh, map, so we have a complete set for all our outfalls. 
good. And uh, the other thing the planning department is helping and Karen going over and working with them is that over the years we've had facility maps um, that we've had erosion control or NPDES permits for the prisons, Medley Park, Rose Street Park, and um, we're getting them scanned in because they're just taking up too much room right. <laughs> and they're hard to keep track of. So they're scanning them into the uh, paper copies that we have here, and then we'll be able to keep them online and have them more available for when we need to investigate things. Mm -hmm. uh, so th th it doesn't take much effort at all, Karen said, but uh, you have to sit there and feed them in one at a time. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working on that over the next couple of months, you know, so we don't take up too much of their time. Right. And then we'll have to prepare uh, or takes about a, almost a week to fill out the report uh, in September. We'll yep. be busy in September here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ed. OK, next report from cooperating agencies. I see Beth said today she wasn't going to be here, right? Right. And uh, so we didn't want to hear from her. But Linda's here. Whoa. She, there she is. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody again. Um, yeah, so I have my monthly report um, and that stands as is a lot of stuff this month. Um, so if anybody has any questions and anything there, just ask me. Um, and then in addition to that, the State Conservation Commission meeting was today. Um, this was a very busy um, agenda for the commission today. A lot of financial items passed. Um, most of it was nutrient management, manure management, delegation agreement, um, and funding related. Um, um, there is a five-year delegation agreement with um, the commission for the nutrient management and manure management delegation agreement. And I know that you guys don't really do much with that except through Chester County. So I won't go into a lot of that detail. Um, but again, um, that information will be on the State Conservation Commission website um, should anybody want more information about that. What, that's that's after next month, after the, um, the minutes are passed. So you'll be able to there's a, a one month, just like your meeting, um, a one month delay. Um, uh, I'm sorry, there's a two month delay because they have bi monthly. The in between are just informational sessions, not voting items. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I would like to also, the, there's, um, it's fairly consistent funding um, from the CDFAP. Um, allocations from um, PDA, um, uh, Department of Ag, and DEP, Department of Environmental Protection. So um, that's about 7.5, a little short of $7.5 million allocated through um, CDFAP, which is Conservation District Fund Allocation Program, which that includes the state line items, the budget. Um, um, allocated to the districts. It also includes the unconventional gas well fund money. Um, so, and that, if if you remember years back when that was instituted, it's called Act 13. Um, and that was one of the provisions in that act was um, um, adjustments based on the consumer price index and so since that has increased um there was there's a bump i think it's like a thousand dollar bump um per district um so that's that's a little bit of good news um that's about that's most of what was what was discussed at the commission meeting budget budgetary items <laughs> um so also though um the um, trainings are re, um, being reinstituted at the regional level for Chapter 102 and PDES. So districts got a an email, I think it was last week, to submit um, topic items that they would find of value regionally. So I'm just putting that bug in people's ear again. Um, Paul Grella, who um, has taken Nate Crawford's position, 
he will um, sort through anything that is submitted. The items get submitted directly to Mark Lonergan, who is one of the state engineers. So just, you know, if you have things, um, they are a wide open book. I was in a meeting this morning um, with the Northeast Regional Office and Paul Grella was on and he's very excited about these trainings. Um, they didn't happen last year. They just kind of started happening a few years ago and then COVID hit. So he's very excited to have this happen again. Um, it's still very much in the formative stages, but it will be this fall. And again, anything that the staff or you, Ed, have have that you really um, topic related, um, get them to mark and they'll sort through them or run it through Chris Smith um, because that's also you know, who you can feed it through so that he can. So it's a it's a joint effort, but that should be a really good, good information session. I know that the districts really liked that when when it was done a, a couple years ago. It was much more effective than the statewide meetings where, you know, 250 people cram into a room and everybody across the state who has all different kinds of resource concerns are trying to get their questions answered. Um, this is a much better format. So um, we're really happy to get that back um, back online. So um, if anybody has any questions other than that, that's I think that's all I have. Linda, I did have a question yeah. regarding, uh, have you heard anything about them restarting the program evaluation process? Oh, um, yes, I, I did, but it wasn't anything definitive. Um, Paul Grella and Sean Frajanic, they recognized that it kind of fell off and they definitely want to get that going again. That conversation, the last I heard was, um, I was just, no, I wasn't part of the conversation. I was just witness um, to it, but. Okay. But, yeah, they had people that scheduled and they had to cancel them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that will get going again. That's definitely an interest because districts like that feedback too. Um, it's very much a, a give and take session. So um, I'm assuming that's probably where you're coming from too, Ed. That's a, a, it's really good for districts to get the sense that, yes, we're doing what, you know, is expected of us programmatically instead of you know, not not having any input for for ten years. So yeah, I'm sure that a lot of districts is, are looking forward to that. And we're but all yeah, new that people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that will start up again. I just don't have a timeline. Okay, if you do, let us know. I will. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll just put a bug out and and just see because, like I said, that was about a month ago, and I'll just see if they've put any thought into that, and I'll let you, you know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, thank you, Linda. You're very welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is Ed's report. Okay, um, a few things I'd like to highlight from my report. One is that the uh, Chapter 105 is a uh, general permitting program. It allows us to attach uh, federal authorization to our state permits. And um, they have now just updated the state general permit um, programmatic permit uh, for the Army Corps. Now it's number six. This is the sixth version of it, and we had some training on it. Um, it's a little, it's a little confusing at the point because technically all the S federal permits expired as of uh, uh, June thirtieth. Uh, so, but if you had a a general permit that you hadn't started that you started construction on you certainly have a year to finish it if you had even an agreement or a contract for them to start the work and they haven't started you can still go um, to the uh, end of the um, not one year mm -hmm. but what is a contract I don't know so and that, that wasn't really delved into so hopefully it, it won't cause anybody any problems uh, they didn't even say uh, the state permit would still be adequate, you know, applicable to anyone that had the state permit. And the federal permit, all we did is attach it. So would that mean all you had to do is send them another one? 
<laughs> so they didn't really explain it or go into detail. I think they, this was happening uh, on the fly a little bit because it's right up to the deadline. And we don't even have under our e-permitting system now, uh, which we haven't had an application through e-permitting for the NPDES program, but the 105 program, they gave us a, a workarounds because they can't fix the um, the 105. It's going to take several months for them to get everything into the system to be able to change it. So we have to have workarounds for mm -hmm. this time period. So hopefully um, it won't cause anybody any problems, but um, we're trying to learn a little bit more. And and everybody's on vacation now, so we right. haven't been able to get any answers. Right. So uh, we'll, we'll try to work that out. Uh, the other thing is we did get a, a conference call with... Um, John Berger and the state on the spotted lanternfly. They're not going to give any money for uh, grants for treatment this year. Uh, they're going to offer districts that we apply by the uh, end of July here uh, up to up to five to ten thousand dollars the way they phased it, phrased it. And it basically is going to be for educational efforts and also uh, which we don't need to do a lot of educational efforts because Penn State is getting paid to do that, mm -hmm. and they have the uh, publications, so we can get copies of that stuff. But they will uh, allow us to buy circle traps and distribute them. So we're going to ask municipalities. I think that was one of our uh, goals, and I, the board can correct me if they'd like to do something else. Um, we can buy, and they're eighteen dollars a piece. So we, I don't, we won't be able to buy it. A significant amount of them, but it might be able to help some municipalities with a uh, park that they're having problems with. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that was a good idea to apply it for it that way, use our our money to buy the circle traps and distribute them. Um, but um, I'm looking for your input from the board on that issue. So we want to talk about that now before sure. I move on. Sure, sure. Um, I think anything that you can do that might um deter the spotted lantern flies would be a good idea and capturing them in the circle trap seems like a pretty good way to go. Um, I think it's probably a good use of the money. Okay, um, just just an update. We've put the, um, we put several, we had 50 of the circle traps yeah. um, from last year, we got them and uh, we've been putting them out at uh, county parks and some of the county parks that we did treatments of are, are, are it seems like the uh, insecticide is still working on the trees or somewhat because we're not getting a lot in the traps like we did last time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting more earwigs in the traps than, <laughs> That's okay than uh, nymph, nymphs, but there are out there, but they're just not as abundant as last year. I mean, we, right. we would, we're putting up the sticky bands, which uh, a lot of people don't want us to do the sticky bands because of bycatch with right. uh, honeybees and squirrels and birds and anything else. Um, but uh, so that's why we're not doing that. Uh, we're using the circle trap. We're not catching any bycatch uh, mm -hmm. per se, right. but we uh, they're not catching a lot of the nymphs just yet. So they're they've hatched and they're out there. And uh, maybe the the treatment and eliminating a lot of the Atlantis tree that we did mm -hmm. on the parks has, has had some benefit to our, our park mm -hmm. system. So that's a good sign. But good. that's what we're out there for. I've seen uh, fewer nymphs than I did the year before. Last year, I saw a lot of nymphs all over, like fruit things, you know. I don't see them this year, not as many at all. I don't know whether they're having a bad year, the spotted lantern flies are. No one said. Um, Intercommunity Health contacted us, Helen Guggen from Intercommunity Health. Uh, they were concerned because they've heard rumblings about aerial spraying that's going to occur. Mm -hmm. And um, on our conference call, they did mention the possibility of that occurring, but they didn't have they didn't make it sound like it was it was only going to be in high traffic areas and then they made it sound like they're going to concentrate and they're trying to reduce the spread along transportation routes but then uh, when karen reached out um, to the department of ag it sounds like they have a list of potential sites in delaware county they're going to do some spraying so hopefully we'll be able to keep that on top of that and to be able to share it with the health department because there will be people with concerns. Uh, I guess they have to send out notices like they did with gypsy moth, but they'd have to send out notices to anybody with sensitivity, but hopefully we can get some advanced notice uh, so the uh, intercommunity health can get on top of that with us and help uh, educate the public on that. Well, it seems like all, all along the rail bed, there's tons of Atlantis still. <laughs> and, uh, so that would probably be a good place to put your, uh, efforts right so yeah. so 
Does anybody else have any input into whether buying the circle traps and offering to distribute them to the municipalities is a good, bad, or indifferent I project idea? It sounds logical to me. Might encourage the municipalities to take action when they might not have. Right. right. We thought of something free may entice them. <laughs> yeah, we they did. Karen helped. Uh, Last year, we did a few sticky band traps with some of the municipalities, um, and Haverford was one of them, but Trainer was another one, with, which I, that's mm -hmm. the first we've worked with someone down in Trainer. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was some interest last year, and uh, hopefully, uh, it, hopefully the, um, the areas that didn't get treated may have a need for this, and maybe it, I don't have any problem with uh, some of our um, partners, such as the the new and gross mill or things like that too so we can include them if if we don't have a use but mm -hmm. okay so I, we can put a grant in up to ten thousand dollars in buying circle traps right. and uh we'll see what we can promote right. just seems like uh this may be an off year and maybe next year won't be so we don't really know how much uh the patterns of uh spotted lantern flies as much so this might be good to prophylactically put it out there Right. And then, yeah, because this Atlantis tree, even though we did the uh, spray program in the parks, we didn't cut down the female trees. Um, so they're still there. Yeah. So they're going to be reproducing and putting yeah. out more trees. But yeah. um, we were we hope to do some of that. But Mark had uh, staffing problems over the winter and then wasn't able to uh, cut some of the trees down. Right. But we had a mark, but now they're no longer marked now. So. Oh. Would people come and take off the little ribbons or whatever? Well, it's, we had crayon in there. So oh, yeah, washed away. Washed right. away. So that's good. Okay, and the other thing I just wanted to let the board know is that um, we were all, we didn't have any plans that exceeded the review period okay. for the first time in several months. So that's a good. We did 21, 29 erosion and sediment control plan reviews in, in June. Uh, we have 12 of them that are in various stages of the permit administrative completeness uh, uh, review process, and we have 19 additional plans that are in the review stack. Uh, we have a couple priority projects that are working with the uh, the regional offices made a high priority, so we'll we'll try to get those done as soon as we can um, to meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you'll see on there is the Idle Hour Tennis Club. Um, we all, we always have a, some problems, uh, unique problems, I think, to Delaware County. But this one, the it's on Darby Creek, and uh, it's next right on the dividing line. Springfield's on one side, and Upper Darby's on the other. Upper Darby approved, uh, let the the Idle Hour Tennis Club put in uh, or maintain. I shouldn't say put in because I know that historically there was a levee in, in the floodplain floodway. And uh, so they were trying to maintain it, but they didn't get any permits. And some of the, the uh, extension of this levy was probably on township ground as well. But during the change in administration, people didn't know and they authorized the work in the floodplain, which would, would have required a 106 permit as well. So we've had a couple meetings now. The state's still trying to figure out what to do because we're getting legislative complaints from the people in Springfield saying that this changed the floodway of the creek and the floodplain. So it's causing them to have more flooding on their side. I don't think that's a true statement, but I don't I don't know how how you can verify it. Exactly we got hit with a couple of big storms. Uh, I think you, you don't see any evidence of the, the levee. I don't think it's any higher than it was before, but it's definitely different. I think they filled it in. Um, they took out several houses on rolling road in springfield mm -hmm. after uh floyd right. and this is the the last house that didn't and they're getting a little bit of the stream bank uh, erosion but the stream bank erosion is occurring in an area where you would expect it because it's right where this the stream makes a bend right, right. into the guy the back bend, the person the homeowners of bank bend. so the ep is in charge of it now and uh, we're going to have another conference uh, uh with the Idle Hour people in Upper Darby at uh, towards the end of the month here. So Idle Hour is in Springfield. It's in Upper Darby. It's in Upper Darby, okay. Which looks like it's in Haverford because it's right on the oh right on that cusp yeah right, that right, exactly. Garden sector. Right, right. That's it for me. Okay, good. Well, thanks, Ed. Well, it looks like next up 
is Michelle. All right. Um, I don't have anything in particular to highlight. Um, just various permits in different stages from minor amendments, major amendments, and new MPDS permits. And the other thing for June that we were busy with were complaints that we received, some for MPDS permanent sites and some for um, projects that are smaller. So um, July is keeping on that trend so far as well. <laughs> So if anybody has any questions, um, just let me know. Okay. Looks like you've been busy enough. That's a good thing. Okay. Just so the board is aware, we're all back in the office now. We've been that way uh, with the mask, you know, since they lifted the mask requirement in, in office for people that are vaccinated. Um, no one was asked whether they got vaccinated, but it was a topic of major conversation in the office. So every, we know everyone's vaccinated. <laughs> and which kind they got, I'm yeah, sure, right? Exactly. So we're, we're, we're good to go. We're still trying to keep the building uh, clo closed as much as possible, not having trying to have meetings in the building until we get released from the county to do so um, in a, in a large-scale meeting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that uh, we should continue to use um, the team's uh, format for a lot of our meetings just to save on miles and gas and time. Um, and I think everybody's gotten used to it now and have been able to do it effectively. So I think that was one of the good things that may have come out of this, but we continue to do that. Uh, we'll probably have to start doing more pre-construction meetings in the field uh, because that's people want to see you change. Sure, so, yeah. But uh, so that's, that, that's the changes that have been made with the staff. Hey, Ed, okay. there, there may be other organizations using your building, your room there. I know tomorrow the park board is holding their meeting there. Yes, yeah, they, they, they've been using it. Solid Waste has already been using the meeting okay. room for a long time. Yeah. Okay. How come they can get an uh, internet connection and we can't? Well, or do they not have they're it? They're not using it right now. I we'll, see. we'll have it. They're working on it today, so hopefully we'll have it for the Excellent. next week. <laughs> wondering why is this happening to us? <laughs> exactly. Alrighty. Well, thanks, Michelle. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. Uh huh. And next up is Connor. Yeah, I uh, just kind of had a, a pretty good mix of office work and in the field. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. But uh, one thing I didn't put on here that I wanted to make note of was the uh, MS4 inspections. That was my first time being involved with that. So that was kind of interesting uh, just to kind of see how that operates and filling out the inspection forms for that was uh, pretty interesting. So I enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, that it was it was also uh, I got to sit on that uh, meeting for the Idle Hour Tennis Club as well, uh, kind of get my side of it. So I was the first one out there to inspect it was from twenty back in January. So it's just interesting to see how far and not how far it's come. So uh, yeah, other than that, uh, pretty standard. If there was any questions about that at all, okay. All right, thanks, Connor. Yeah. All righty. Next up would be Ari. Um, yeah, so I did a lot of inspections this last month, um, attended a couple of trainings, and uh, I think the, like, the biggest thing I focused on was um, submitting some expired and and uh, PDES uh, permit letters to some general and individual permits that have expired um, to try and get them archived and clean some of the uh, space out in here. Um, I've res I've sent out about uh, 40 in total between the two months, um, about 21 this month, and I've received uh, word back from maybe 10% of them. Um, different responses uh, having to clarify why they're getting this letter um, and then but most of them are are working to get uh, the NOTs submitted so that we can close out their permits. A lot of just so uh, the board knows a lot of those uh, people are going to find out why they should close out a permit because uh, the state also they worked on this month a list of all our permits that were ever issued here 
to determine whether they're active or not, because it's mm -hmm. individual permits, at least not the general permits, but the individual NPDES permits, they're going to institute a fee, a annual fee. Mm -hmm. So they're going to, they wanted to ask to go through all our permits to make sure which ones are active. So uh, see which ones are going to get the bills. Right. So you know, all of a sudden you get a fifteen hundred dollar bill. I don't know what the fee is, and no one's told us. It'll perk up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that fee will then uh, be in maybe a, a something to instigate them closing. And mm -hmm. and it, I put Ari on this because we definitely are out of space with all of these boxes and the sizes of plans. So hopefully we can close them out as soon as we get the NOTs. So we've been closing uh, all the. We're getting a lot better compliance with the new permits, and we're getting a lot more NOTs in. Um, but um, the old ones mm -hmm. are just hang fire in there, and we have to go through this process to be able to close them out anyhow. Right. Well, we so can do it. So it's part of tidying up, right? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Looks like you guys have all spent a little time in Radnor this month. Several of these. Always. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> busy place. Already, and I guess. Ms. K oh, Karen's not here, but her report is. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'll try yeah. to do my best. I mean, I work closely with Karen, but I. Yeah. Well, she mentioned circle traps and the water workshop. Okay, that was good. All right. I read a report not knowing that she wasn't going to be here, and I didn't say anything outrageous, but there you go. She's working with uh, Garrett Williamson now right. on uh, some issues because I guess they the 4-H club has decided to disband their farm operation at Garrett oh. Williamson. I think they they hired the person that was working on it and they're trying to put together some program uh -huh. to, to try to maintain it. They, yeah. I know the 4-H had a problem because the the barn was damaged uh, by uh, um, a tornado so, <clears throat> so that was the thing so they're working on that now and I, I was surprised when i went out there that there's actually a uh, a, a full-blown um community service agriculture or uh, csa yeah. uh, out there working and it's uh producing food and selling to customers not to the shareholders so mm -hmm. that's good so i think it's good for them uh for karen to be working with them to try to help See what's going on there. Yeah. See what we can help and benefit. We've worked with Garrett Williamson on many different projects right. over the years when it was 4-H. Mm -hmm. So hopefully with, uh, they can continue some of that. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's been a good thing too. Alrighty, I think I've hit everybody so far. Right? Nobody has something special to share with us. Anybody? Uh, well, one thing I would say is. Um, about a month ago, uh, Pennsylvania Farm Bureau uh, asked me to come on board with their legislative committee. Oh, yeah. And we had a, a Zoom meeting with a bunch of legislators and some farmers. And uh, my input was in agritourism. And just uh, last week, Wolf, Governor Wolf signed a, a new agritourism bill, which uh, limits a lot of the liability for people coming onto farms. Oh, that's good. So it eliminates the uh, the simple slip and falls and the tripping hazards. And the, as long as you're documenting, uh, having signage saying, hey, you're on a working farm, right. might be on even ground or something like that. Right. And it's something they've been, been pushing for a couple of years. And, uh, progress. So that really, that was that was nice. I sent <laughs> off to my insurance company and they said that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, will your uh, well, payments go down now? Probably not. <laughs> no. Probably not. That is right. What about biosecurity too? They oh yeah, right. Kitties with the uh, fecal matter on them, all that kind of stuff. Didn't right. they have that trouble yeah. with that? I mean, yeah, there's another problem. But yeah. I'm just worried about you know, like uh, avian flu and stuff when you yeah. have those outbreaks and stuff, and right. agritourism. That you know how much you would when you have to shut it down, or if you have that type of operation, like Lynn Villa as. Uh, as the uh, animals on yeah, the sure. petting zoo, and, kind of and you have some, you know, still have some. We did the petting zoo. We not we didn't do it last year. We're not doing it this year. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the insurance companies have gotten really weird. Um, they, I think they were always they, weird. Personally, I'm, I'm going through my insurance for it, basically for the farm, which mm -hmm. does, you know, the the, the kitty rides in the fall, mm -hmm. uh, the Christmas tree operations, all that. And I get my insurance policy, and I'm reading through the exclusions, and it says excludes Christmas tree, cut your own, and and lot sales. I call them back up. I said, yeah, 
I've had this policy for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, well, so now I have to get a separate policy for the Christmas oh, trees. Oh, no. And there's hand saws. I'm not using the hand saws. Right. Yeah, right. He's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> out there. Uh... And uh, the, um, what was the other thing? Anyway. Yeah, it's just, uh, they're getting very picky. Mm-hmm. They, they won't, they won't cover moon so. bounces now. Oh, no. They have a, the pillow bounce, which is the thing that goes in the ground. They'll, right. they'll cover that, but not the moon bounces where they used to cover that. Right. Um, and another exclusion would be uh, the petting zoos. Huh. So. And that's something that I feel has always been important. It's something your mom did with the farm tours that she used to have out there. Just, yeah. just exposing okay. the urban people, the, the, the sure. suburban people, to the what agriculture, where the food comes from, yeah. is an important function that I hate to see you know missed. Well, we'll start out with that little girl that got sick and died from E. coli up in uh, Yardley there. Right. And they said it was from the petting zoo, and it turned out two years later they found out that it was. Canada geese that flew over and pooped on the, the gate, and the little girl was holding onto the gate. Ah. But yeah. in and those two years, true. Nationwide dropped every farm policy. Right. Mm. And they're not dialing it back up again. No. no. Because as long as they've got your money, they're not going to do it. No. No. How about that? Oh, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, all right. I believe that that pretty much wraps it up for us. I would entertain a motion to. Adjourn. So moved. All right. Thanks, Randy. Second. All righty. Thank you. And all in favor, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> all right. We'll see you in September, as the song says, right? <laughs> Take care, Robert. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Oh, good.